Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be looking at this. It's only exclusive to the Natural History Museum in London and it is a set of eight dinosaurs. And these have been around for quite a while. I remember seeing these as a around kid. Around 2006, I saw these in the museum and I never got a chance to get them. I did, however, find some paint your own dinosaurs from the museum. They were sold somewhere else, which was weird but it was still in the UK and it was just some of these models. It was the Baryonyx, the Triceratops, and the Velociraptor and the Diplodocus. Those models had the same exact sculpt, but I could give them whatever paint job I wanted. The front of the box uh, has got a big window showing all of the models, except the Iguanodon's kind of cut off there, you can barely see it. But it's got a very striking appearance there with the dinosaur eye up on the right corner, the Natural History Museum logo on the left, and this box has got a lot of dinosaur facts, especially on the back. It has tons of information about the museum itself. There's also information about each single dinosaur from this uh, set, which is very, very nice. You can cut out the pictures of these figures with their information and keep them as little cards too, which is really sweet. This is probably one of the best uh, dinosaur toy products from the museum. Some other products look quite dated and they don't really look that nice, but these are genuinely really appealing and up to date too, in terms of all the information that they have written. Obviously, they're not that realistic. They're quite stylized, but they serve their purpose and they look really nice. So let's have a look at them individually. So when we open the box, we slide out this plastic tray so we can remove all the dinosaurs from it. And here we go, these are all the dinosaurs and pterosaur. Oh, well, let's take a closer look at them individually. We're gonna leave the T-Rex last because it's the T-Rex. Let's start with the Pteranodon. Um, I'm quite surprised actually with this one because it is quite rubbery, like it's really bendy. It feels more rubbery than the others, um, which is quite interesting, but uh, it gives it a little bit more realism, I guess, because you can just flap its wings and all of that, which is really cool. Unfortunately, the way it was sitting in the box uh, means that the, the crest is a little bit bent, but it's not too much of a problem. You could probably heat bend that back with some boiling water or maybe a hair dryer. It's got some really striking colors. As you can see, it's holding a little fish in its jaws, which is really cool. It's painted with metallic paint too. So talking about the sculpt, it's not really that accurate, but it's okay. I mean, it's got really long legs and it's missing a sort of tail. I think Pteranodon had a tiny bit of a tail, just really short. Uh, also, I think the wing tips were a bit more rounded, but of course these sculpts are quite old now, as they date back from more than 10 years ago, almost 20 years now, quite a while, if you think about it. They're not too detailed, as you can see, the wings aren't sculpted uh, to look really detailed. It does have pycno fibers, which is really nice though, on the rest of the body. These definitely look like they've been hand sculpted. Again, the paint is really quite striking. It's got some, it's got a really bright blue on the underside of the wings and really bright blue on around the eyes, a red crest, a uh, like a yellowish uh, jaw. And the rest of it is black and gray. You can't put it in a standing position, unfortunately. It doesn't have wire inside, but it's a great toy nonetheless. I definitely would have loved this as a child. And it's an official Natural History Museum toy, so that's awesome. Okay, so this Stegosaurus is quite interesting. Uh, it's got some really glossy plates. That's the first kind of striking thing. Um, and some really glossy like stuff. I th I'm guessing this is glue around the tail. And the head is quite warped too. I think they just took it out of the mold a bit too quickly, or even the mold might be a bit weird. I don't think they sculpted it like this originally and it just got molded strange, but I could be wrong. This has definitely been hand sculpted like the Pteranodon. It sports some interesting detail on the body. You can see it's got some sort of bird-like scales all over the body. 
The plates are quite smooth with some lines going down uh, up them. The tummy is completely uh, textureless, so they could put some writing down there, like made in China and serial numbers and whatever. And you can see it's made out of two parts, the main body and the tail. So I'm guessing it's hollow inside. Yeah, I think it is. It doesn't look too bad. It definitely looks a bit strange in the face, but it's not bad at all. It's not scientifically accurate to today's standards, but as a quick sort of cheap toy, I think it does the job. It stands all right. It does kind of wobble a little bit, even if it's got four legs, but that's probably just uh, because of the nature of this material. It's a bit bendy and it probably didn't sit very well in the box. So the coloration's a bit different than from uh, the picture behind the box. On the box, it's completely green with a, like a black here, but this one's sort of a more dull green uh, with a brown on the top. And the eye socket and the beak, the claws and the tagomizers are all a uh, beige color. There's some nice attention to detail. You can see a bit of the rib cage poking out and some nice texture too. Proportions are a bit wonky, but that's fine. It is a cheap dinosaur toy and it still looks great. I love how goofy the Diplodocus looks. Look at the front of the face. <laughs> it's so squished. It's quite basic uh, in terms of uh, sculpt and paintwork. The sculpt isn't too detailed. It's just got some wrinkles all around and it has some really big spikes going from the uh, the top of the head to the tip of the tail. Well, not really the tip of the tail, but closer towards the end of the tail. It's got a really sort of strong bend in the tail. That indicates it was actually sculpted like that and it's not a bend from uh, sitting in the box weirdly. This one is uh, molded and cast into two parts as well. As you can see, there is a seam line going down here after the neck. And you can see the glossiness again, just like the Stegosaurus around the area. So I think my guess might actually be correct that it is, that the glossiness is due to the glue. It does have painted uh, details in the mouth. It's just got a painted tongue, which is cool. The eyes are painted and the claws are painted too. There's not really that much else to say about it. It looks like a sauropod. And I think you can instantly tell it's meant to be a Diplodocus because it doesn't have a like a vertical-ish uh, neck, but it's got a more of a horizontal look. And uh, also all the spikes are kind of uh, iconic to uh, representations of this dinosaur. I don't think we've got any scientific proof that it did have spikes, but most reconstructions do have the spikes. So it makes sense for a toy Diplodocus to have some spikiness going on. Let's talk about the Iguanodon. It's again molded into two parts and cast into two parts too. It's still made out of the same material. It's kind of soft, um, but not at the same time. Like there's some bits that are quite strong and hard and some bits that are quite flexible. That's probably because of the thickness of the material. As this is hollow, it probably bends more because of that. The sculpt reminds me a lot of the Walking with Dinosaurs Iguanodon from the show. The sculpt is fairly detailed or well, kind of. It's got the same sort of uh, lines and wrinkles going down the, all the body, just like the Diplodocus did. But this is cast in white plastic. It's got some, uh, some black stripes going down from the top of the head to the tip of the tail. It's on the legs too. That same black has been used to paint the toe uh, nails and hand claws and the pupil in the eye and a brown has been used for the beak and an orange for the eyes. The eyes are fairly well placed too so that's a plus. It does have some sort of weird stuff going on here on the claw. I guess the paint stuck to the material that uh, this dinosaur was resting on but yeah uh, I think if uh, I had this as a kid it would have been my sort of the iguanodon from my collection. I think this one might be one of my favorites from the bunch. I really love the sculpt. It's really detailed and I love these colors. I don't know if it's very realistic color wise, but it certainly is striking and it looks beautiful. 
So this is a two part sculpt again. There's a big seam line down the middle, which is a little bit of a shame, but it's okay because they're cheap figures. There's no detail on the underneath of the body, but on the top, you can see there's loads of scales and they're quite deep too. Uh, so this is fairly detailed. Um, it's got some wrinkles down the spine, which are really cool. And some like bigger random osteoderms going around here, which look cool. It's got loads of spikes on the uh, frill. I don't know if that's really that accurate if it had that many, but that head sculpt looks lovely. I really, really like that. It's really appealing. So this figure is uh, made out of a uh, like white plastic, but it's painted with this really lovely teal color. It's got some white stripes and this uh, burgundy sort of maroon red uh, pattern on the frill and the eye socket. The horns are painted white, all the horns on the frill as well as the face horns and the claws and the beak are painted with a dark grey. Does this stand? Yes, it stands perfectly fine. Even though it's in a weird sort of running position, it still works really well. And it's cool because it looks like it's in an attack pose, which will look really nice with the T-Rex. I absolutely adore this figure. The Baryonyx has always been one of my favorites. It's such a cool animal and it's native to the UK. And this toy looks really nice too. As you can see, just like with the Pteranodon, this, there is a fish included. And this is a massive fish if you consider that this animal was about 10 meters long. A really big fish. Anyway, this figure is again made in two parts. Unfortunately, the detail on this toy isn't that great. As you can see, it's quite smooth overall. There is some wrinkles picking up right here along the tail and a bit on the leg there. Not too much going on on the neck. And it's not really that scientifically accurate either. The head looks uh, a bit off, but I still think it looks really cool. There's something about these colors that make it look really appealing, regardless of what the sculpt looks like which is a common theme, I think, with these figures, with the exception of the Diplodocus, that's just plain gray. But having such stark contrast between the belly counter shading and the top really does look quite striking. So it's cast in brown plastic. It has some sort of off-white creamy coloring too, including the stripes on the underbelly. The eyes are green. They are a bit too big on this. They're not sculpted big, they're just painted over the eye. And it kind of looks a bit weird. They look a bit googly. It's got a painted mouth. Even the roof of the mouth is painted. And it's got painted teeth too. It's a bit sloppy, but it does the job, I guess, for a cheap toy. The fish is green and all the claws are painted except the dew claw with a black. The same black used for the pupils of both the fish and the baryonyx itself. It stands well because it's using the fish as a tripod. Okay, so this I thought always looked a bit weird. The sculpt isn't amazing. It does have some really nice detail though, which is a, a positive. The paint apps look really nice on this too. So talking about the sculpt first, it is not a, it's not made out of two parts like the other figures. So I think the Pteranodon and the Velociraptor are the only ones that are made out of one solid piece of material. It does sport feathers, which is quite up to date, considering this was uh, sculpted a few years back. The arm feathers aren't very accurate because they should be starting on the second finger. Also, the wrists are pronated. They should be more like this with the palm of the hands facing each other. The bottom jaw is much too wide. It's really wide. <laughs> it looks so goofy. And the head shape isn't that accurate either, but it does have some sort of cool little quill feathers here, which look cool. The feathering stops halfway on the tail. Well, no, actually the coloring of the feathers stops here, but the feather sculpt continues a bit further down and then it turns into skin sort of skin folds. The feet look super strange. They look like ovals underneath. <laughs> and the toe claws are really strange too. These are supposed to have massive killing claws, 
these look like just normal claws sticking up. But again, the coloring is super appealing and the paint apps are applied pretty well. The eyes are painted to perfection. Everything is cast into this brown plastic, like orangey brown plastic. And all the other colors have been applied to it. So we have white skin. Uh, we have black skin for the head. Uh, we have black claws. And we do have a blue eye socket with a yellow eye and a black pupil. The inside of the mouth is painted like the baryonyx. The teeth paint isn't that precise, but it gets the job done. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't want to stand properly. It keeps falling over, but I think that's probably due to how it was packaged. So if we were to heat bend this a bit, then it might be able to stand like so. Another thing I should talk about the coloration is that uh, the Natural History Museum has sort of branded uh, their representations of uh, their dinosaurs with specific color schemes because there were some hand puppets I remember when I was a kid that had the exact same colors and patterns. It was a hand puppet of a velociraptor head uh, like a plushy version and it had these same exact colors. Last but certainly not least is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is uh, an interesting one. I've kind of always wanted this one as a kid because it was the T-Rex. Um, it looks really cool. It looks really appealing color wise. The sculpt's a bit off, which is a little bit of a shame, but it still looks all right. Again, these are cheap toys, so I'm not really expecting amazing stuff, but for them being so cheap, the paint apps certainly make up for it. It looks so good. It looks really appealing. The colors are beautiful. So let's talk about the colors. It is cast in a brown color. It has some pinkish uh, white stripes and underbelly. The eyes are this beautiful green surrounded by a black eye socket. Pupil is black too. The mouth is painted like the baryonyx. It has painted teeth and the claws are all black, except the dew claw. I think this is a common thing with these figures. All the dew claws are unpainted. Uh, let's get more into detail with the sculpt itself. So the head shape isn't that accurate. It's got some uh, wrinkles in, or folds in the skin here. And there is some nice skin detail over it. Especially here on the eyebrows, there's some lovely texture and some uh, scales all over the body. It's not amazing texture wise. Like I think the Triceratops is the best one concerning sculpt detail, but it still looks really nice. Does it stand? Yes, it does. So that's great. Let me know which one is your favorite. I don't think I have a favorite. I just like most of them. I think my least favorite one is the Diplodocus, just because the colors aren't that interesting. Yeah, type down in the comments section down below which one your favorite is. And if you have these toys as well, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, sort of review of the Natural History Museum toy made by Wild Republic. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps.